In my opinion, the best anesthesia for a penile implant is spinal anesthesia. Now, spinal anesthesia is a, a little needle in the back and a, a 1cc of a medication, just like when you go to the dentist, and it numbs you from the waist down. Epidural anesthesia, on the other hand, is what the ladies get for childbirth. That's a much bigger uh, needle, and it has a little cannula, a, a, a catheter is threaded uh, into the epidural space and the doctor will give anesthesia uh, uh, and will not numb the, the, the patient completely because you, you need to push to get the baby out. So spinal anesthesia is a much thinner needle, much smaller needle, and you're numb from the waist down. Now, why is this the best? Well, the first thing that happens with spinal anesthesia is you're numb from the waist down and then the arteries also dilate. The arteries open up and you get really good blood flow to the legs. The legs feel nice and warm before they become numb. And everything dilates, everything stretches, including the penis. So the penis will stretch to the max. The, the doctor sees how big the penis is. It helps you size the erection and it helps you with knowing how much the penis can stretch. You don't have to pull on it to measure it to do a penile implant. But also, now you have the penis has a lot of blood in it and the skin is getting a lot of blood and you've given the patient antibiotics, vancomycin, gentamicin, you get good perfusing, perfusion in that area, you get good tissue penetration of the antibiotics. So in my opinion, it's also better for the delivery of the antibiotic to the local area. In addition, spinal anesthesia never get deep vein thrombosis. People get deep vein thrombosis with general anesthesia. So you have uh, clots in the calf of the legs, that's called vein thrombosis. The, the clot can travel to your heart and you can actually die from it. So it's very important to move after general anesthesia. On the other hand, with the spinal, again, because blood is flowing really well, the arteries are dilated, you do not get uh, DVTs. And it's important. We have a lot of patients that travel, take a plane after the surgery, take a plane before the surgery and so forth. Those patients are at risk of DVTs if they become dehydrated. Again, with the spinal, you never get that. And then the other advantage of the spinal is when the surgery is over, you don't feel anything from the waist down. You go to the recovery room, you don't have any pain. With general anesthesia, they need to wake you up, take the tube out of your mouth, and then bring you to the recovery room, and then they need to give you some painkiller because right away you feel the pain from the penile implant. With the spinal, you gradually feel the, the, this, the discomfort of the penile implant. And so you can deal with it in a much better way and your body will respond in a much better way. So in my opinion, there's nothing better than a spinal anesthesia for this type of surgery. In addition, I just want to mention before I, I lose, you will be sleeping during the spinal anesthesia. But if you want, you could be awake. You'll get a medication such as propofol or Versed which is what uh, people get for colonoscopy, but you're not intubated. You don't have a tube in your throat uh, like general anesthesia. A lot of patients think that general anesthesia is like a colonoscopy. That's not general anesthesia. That's intravenous sedation, and it's very, very different, and, and that's not what people get for general anesthesia for a penile implant.